chemistry time, we're going to write down, uh, we'll just keep it simple, gas laws. Chemistry two time. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Chemistry two time. The oxidation state of chemistry is two, yes. Um, let's begin by enumerating and describing the gas laws. What is, give me one gas law. Oil gas law. law. <laughs> gas law. And then describe it. That's, so enumerate, what does the verb to enumerate mean? So it's a kind of, not exactly the same thing, but it's a fancy way of saying do what with them? State. Sure, yeah, state them, name them. I would say list, that would be more specific. Enumerate really means give, put them in a numbered list. Enumerate, numera, from the Latin number, you know, it's actually the same root word as the word number. Anyway, um, we're going to put them in a numbered list. The first gas law that we're going to talk about is, let's, let's go with Dally's, Boyle's law. Let's enumerate them first and then describe them after. What's the second that we could talk about? Charles. Charles. I don't care if you call it Charles or Charles's. If you're going to call it Charles' law, put it like that. And if you're going to call it Charles's law, put it like that. <coughs> this should match the way you say it. Third? I don't know how to say it. <coughs> Gay you suck? Ideal gas law. We'll do that one next. We'll, we'll say combined gas law for number four. Combined gas oh, yeah. law. There's and then we'll do the ideal, ideal gas law. There's a ton of them. These three are this one. These three together are this one. And these two are used for separate things. Truly, truly, I say unto you, if you memorize this one, you have memorized all of them. It's super easy. We're going to talk about them individually because they are conceptually different, but this is the one, actually these two, you need to memorize. This one com combines all of these. That's why it's called that. Imagine being the dude who, or lady, or lady, who invented this, and all these losers did like a half a job, and they got it named after them, and you're like, come on, guys, they're the same, they all fit. And then you don't get a name, you're like, I could have called this Andrew's law, but it's not going to call it combined gas law, because that's, that's real humility. Strive to be like the dude or lady who invented the combined gas law. Did the work of all three of these losers, put them together, it's better, more useful, well, and you don't even name it after yourself. Well, she didn't come up with them, she already saw them. This is really more of a, a curation, isn't it? Yes, she, it's, it's, it's more like, okay, things. I'm going to look at my information, oh, they can all go together. You're right. Okay, Boyle's law relates what two things. Let, it, for, all of these, for all of these, let's use this sentence frame. Something, some variable, and yes. some other variable are either inversely or directly proportional. Oh, okay. That's so okay. let's say so this. Temperature, temperature is inversely proportional. And volume are? Uh, no, it's pressure. Mm, that's guy That's the amount of that the volume of the fixed amount of gas inversely with the pressure. That is what the thing says of the book. No, volume with a uh, fixed uh, amount held at a constant, constant temperature. Oh yeah, it's not temperature, it's pressure. Oh, Sorry, okay. this one's pressure. And the reason you can remember that, unlike what I just did, is this, and this is truly how I remember it. It might not be the best way. Hazel remembered this from last year. I remember this because it's Boyle's Law, and it sounds like it has to do with temperature, but it doesn't have to do with temperature. <laughs> so Boyle's Law is no temperature. Pressure and volume are what kind of proportional? Inverse. Inversely proportional. Say it as a sentence. Um, I mean, and by that pressure I mean... Pressure and volume are inversely good. proportional. Yes, that is the sentence oh. that's up here. But I want you to say, like, as pressure goes up, what happens to the volume? As pressure goes up, the volume yeah. goes down. Yeah. As pressure goes up, the volume goes up. So if we put more pressure on a balloon, these all only apply to, we use balloons a lot, because they all only apply to what? Boyle's law. No, gases. They only apply to gases. So we use balloons as an example a lot. But if we increase the pressure on a balloon, the balloon will get smaller. What if we decrease the pressure on a balloon? Oh, does it expand? Yeah, it expands. The volume gets larger. How can we decrease the pressure exerted on a balloon? If I blow up a balloon, how could I decrease the atmospheric pressure exerted on it? 
increase volume. Well, no, I'm just saying like it, uh, I could put it in a vacuum chamber of some kind, which would extract all of the atmospheric air, and the balloon should get bigger. We do this in Ooh. the lab sometimes. You see, I, I sometimes blow up a tiny balloon, put it in our tiny vacuum jar, take out the atmospheric pressure, and the balloon gets bigger. Have you seen like the Armstrong like rubber things they put in the vacuum chamber? And it no, that's cool though. But that's exactly this. What you're talking about. Say it a little bit louder so the mic can pick you up. It's like the Armstrong stretchy figures, figurines, and they put them in a gap. Oh. Vacuum chamber. chamber. Vacuum chamber. Right. Uh, and, and the volume gets bigger because the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, we, if we want to be more specific, we could put exterior pressure. Sometimes people get confused about this, about it might be, they might think it's the pressure inside the balloon, but it's not. It's the pressure outside, the exterior pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Okay, then Charles' law. I remember this one as, it isn't Boyle's law which doesn't have to do with temperature. So this one does have to do with temperature. Temperature, go on. Is directly volume. proportional to volume. Yep. Temperature and volume are directly proportional. Now say your sentence. As temperature goes up, volume goes up. Mm -hmm. The warmer it is in your car, the bigger your balloon gets. Someone here, at the homecoming dance had a helium balloon taped or roped around their lapel for about half the dance. Um, you remember that? No. It was me. Uh, oh. I had the helium balloon. Remember it was... Yeah. I had it right here. And it was <laughs> <laughs> but you rest. The height of my book and my embarrassment are inversely proportional. The book went down and my embarrassment went up. Great. Anyway, I had a balloon on my lapel, remember? And when the homecoming dance was done, I I was afraid. It would have been really hilarious if I had just left it outside and I shut my door and there was just a balloon going behind it. I didn't know what happened. I took it off, untied it, and put it into the passenger seat where it still is. And in the in the days since then, the temperature has fluctuated, and every time I look at the balloon, I can I can tell how the temperature has changed since the homecoming dance based on that balloon. On a day like sometimes last week it was 95 degrees, I would come in, the balloon would be like, no, not quite that big, but it'd be bigger than when I put it on. And then a couple mornings ago, or actually this morning it was freezing, and the balloon was just like just like the tiniest little shriveled up thing on the floor because temperature and volume are directly proportional. If the temperature is high, the volume of the gas is high. If the temperature is low, the volume of the gas is low. Dilute Sachs law. Well, what have we got left? What, which two of our three variables have we not yet related? Uh, pressure and temperature. Yeah. Pressure and temperature are, um, I'm waiting for someone to finish my sentence frame. Um, How did this get done? Directly. Let's think about it. I'm going to put it up there whether you're right or wrong, but let's think about it. Um, hairspray? Aerosol hairspray? Do you use that? Does anyone use that? No, but... Okay, uh, you though, do you... Doesn't matter. Has everyone used something called canned air to yeah. spray something off? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or like Glade and yes. Yoderizer yes. Mist? Or something. It's yeah. so super cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as the pressure, as you release pressure from that thing, especially if it's upside down, we'll talk about why maybe later on. Um, so but if you, inversely. yeah, well, if the pressure lowers, yeah. what does the temperature do? Lower. Oh, yeah, lower. 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 So okay. directly proportional. You can also think of this. Um, have you ever pumped up a bicycle tire with a hand pump or a foot pump? Maybe. Mm -hmm. What happens? What is? What does the cylinder of that pump feel like? Oops. Uh, I, never, it's not. I guess it's the, not hot. It should be hot, shouldn't it? Because what's happening is you're compressing the gas that's in that cylinder, pumping it into a tire. Also, if you let the tire, if you, um, but the cylinder itself isn't warm. Yeah. Um, but it, and also, if you let the, the if you if you're releasing pressure from a tire, maybe you air up your tires in your car, and you're at 40 on accident, and you had to release them to go it gets back down to 32 or 35, whatever you wanted at psi is the unit I'm using. Um, 
the t air coming out of there, you might have never noticed this because you think it's just the, the moving air feels cold like wind, which is kind of true, but the air itself is colder because of the dry sex law. Also, the, the example I really like of this, there are two. One is the space shuttle or some other spacecraft on re-entry, people think that that glowing red, glowing red thing that's in front of it is because somehow friction, but they're wrong. It's something called adiabatic heating, which is because of the Lussac's law. What's doing is it's pressurizing the air in front of it so much that the air is glowing red hot. Um, and also, the opposite thing, if you're having a cookout, 110 degrees in the 4th of July, like it was this 4th of July, and you're having a cookout and you're using your propane grill or your daddy's using the propane grill or whatever, as the propane, propane grill runs all day, the gas, the propane gas that's being let out, the pressure is lowering. So what should that cylinder do? Get cold. It should get cold. And in fact, if you run the propane grill all day long, you will see not first condensation, but then frost get on the, the grill. Yeah, and that's have, one way, that's one way you can tell how much propane is left in your cylinder. Here's your little propane cylinder. Like when you go if, ice if, if it's this and it's all frost down here, that's how full it is. That's where the liquid propane is. Like when you go ice fishing and you use those things, and you plug it into like a little blowtorch thing. I think it's frosting. Yeah, yeah, it does pretty quickly too because the pressure is being released. Combined gas. Let's let's real quick before we move on. Let's let's write down the equations for these. Um, I I would I would have done this as a table if I were you, but it's too late now. So I'm just gonna you can do these below it or whatever. But I'm gonna first of all for combined gas. Let's write the other three combined. That's as simple as it gets. Let's write the formula over here. What's the formula for Boyle's Law? These are very simple formulas. So P1 over V1? Or is P1 it times, times V1? Equals P2 times Okay. Charles Law? Uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay. You lose X law? P1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over... Oh, that's the combined <laughs> over T2. Yep, and then combined, we just combine them. P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. What do the ones and the twos represent here? Um, the pressure before and the pressure yeah. after. Yeah, that's how I like to phrase it, just before and after. You could say initial and final, or first and last, or case one and case two, but before and after is adequate. P1, V1, so the pressure before times the volume before equals the pressure after times the volume after, for instance. What do you notice about all of these equations? What are you going to have to do every single literal time you use one of these, no matter what? You will always have to, yes, of course, but you'll always have to do what before you substitute? Manipulate. You have to manipulate. How do I know you have to manipulate? Because there's going to be variables on the Yeah, side. not one of these has only one variable on the side, so you need to manipulate every single time. You always are going to have to manipulate these. What's another thing we always have to remember when we're doing these? Always manipulate and always what? Use, I'm looking for the temperature scale we must use and tell me why. Kelvin. Yep, always use Kelvin and why. Because it's more accurate. It's more nope, it's not more accurate. We can get a very it's accurate. It's, it's use, that's nice too, but that's not use. that's not what we always have to use it. Oh, it's the scientific unit. That's true. It is the SI. But that, those things are nice, but that doesn't mean we have to use them. We don't have to use meters, but for these we literally do have to use Kelvins or the Fahrenheit equivalent called Rankins. But why? What's the temperature at um, in Antarctica right now, do you reckon? In Fahrenheit or Celsius, I don't care. What is it? Just guess. Negative something. Negative something. That's exactly the problem. Oh, Kelvin doesn't Kelvin mean, has no mean. negatives. Look at, uh, look at this one. What's the temperature in the freezer in the staff room right now? We talked about this last week. What was it? Do you remember? In Fahrenheit. 10 Celsius. Mm-hmm. Whatever it equals. Yeah, it was roughly 10 Celsius, but it was zero Fahrenheit. What happens if I put zero degrees Fahrenheit in for temperature one? Yeah, no, look at it though. Mathematically, what happens if I put zero degrees Fahrenheit for temperature you one? Divide. You cannot divide by zero. What if I put negative 15 
And then for temperature one, what's my volume going to be over here? If I put negative, let's say the other two are positive. If I put temperature one in as negative 15, what's my volume going to be? It must be negative. If I have two positives divided by negative, this must be negative. Can I have a negative volume ever? No. no. We always have to use Kelvin, always. OK, and then the ideal gas law, this one's the best one. I like this one the most. PV equals NRT. That should be a capital T. You're going to describe it? Oops, I put that in the describe box. PV equals NRT. The ideal gas law relates, let's put V above, all this other stuff, with molar amount in. So in PV equals NRT, the P is, guess, what? Pressure. Pressure. The V is volume. volume. N, we just said, is molar amount. amount. R is a constant. Rate. No, it's just a constant. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then capital T is temperature. temperature. There are different values of R. There are different values of R in a table in your book on page 454 page 454C table. The R's are constant, but the, depending on what units you use for the other ones. For instance, there's one R value for atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. There's another one for Pascal liters per mole degree Celsius. You just use a different R value depending on what the other units are, so they all drop out. Questions about any of this? You heard the bell ring, but you have questions about any of this? This is the whole chapter, except the last lesson, which is called gas stoichiometry, but here's the thing. You just use stoichiometry, we did in the last chapter, with this stuff. And we'll talk more about that, but it'll be as a Do you have questions about this? Bye.